After what seems like um, almost an eternity of unbroken sunshine uh, here in England, um, today we've got an April shower. And um, that reminded me of a poem written over 620 years ago by Geoffrey Chaucer. Um, this is the very beginning of the Canterbury Tales. Uh, I can't do this in the original Middle English, so I'm going to read a translation, and it's kind of pertinent. When that April, with his showers sweet, the drought of March has pierced root deep, and bathed each vein with liquor of such power that engendered from it is the flower. When Zephyrus too, with his gentle strife, to every field and wood has brought new life in tender shoots, and the youthful sun half his course through the ram has run, and little birds are making melody who all the night with open eye do sleep. Nature their hearts in every way so pricks, then people long to go on pilgrimage. Well, um, unfortunately at the moment, uh, I don't think anybody's going on pilgrimage, but there you are. Um, the next one uh, you will uh, probably know rather well. And um, what's interesting here is that um, the, uh, there was a brother and, and a sister. And her name was Dorothy Wordsworth and his name was William Wordsworth. And the sister, Dorothy, um, uh, did lots and lots of diary entries. She wrote a diary all her life. So here we have a diary entry for April the 15th, 1802. When we were in the woods beyond Galbarrow Park, we saw a few daffodils close to the waterside. We fancied that the lake had floated the seed ashore and that the little colony had so sprung up. But as we went along, there were more and yet more, and at last, under the boughs of the trees, we saw that there was a long belt of them along the shore, about the breadth of a country turnpike road. I never saw daffodils so beautiful. They grew among the mossy stones about and about them. Some rested their heads upon these stones as on a pillow for weariness, and the rest tossed and reeled and danced and seemed as if they verily laughed with the wind that blew upon them over the lake. They looked so gay, ever glancing, ever changing. This wind blew directly over the lake to them. There was here and there a little knot and a few stragglers a few yards higher up, but they were so few as not to disturb the simplicity and unity and life of that one busy highway. We rested again and again. The bays were stormy and we heard the waves at different distances and in the middle of the water like the sea. So I expect you've guessed what this poem is. The Daffodils by William Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills. When all at once I spied a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, 
but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft, when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills, and dances with the daffodils. Interesting, interesting that um, he cuts Dorothy out of this poem, as he often did. <laughs>